I'm here in Elizabethport, New Jersey at the Black Buffalo facility again and this is their brand new printer. It's a much more manageable size. It's modular so they can make all kinds of changes to it. We're going to talk with their team about the improvements that they've made and some of the exciting things they have looking forward to in the future. You might remember they've partnered with Alquist 3D so we'll also hear from Eamon about their new collaboration. Welcome back to Black Buffalo 3D. We're here with our new printer, the Nexcom 1G. We're really happy to show it off to you and give you a sneak peek before it's announced publicly. Can you talk about some of the differences between this printer and the other printer? So we're probably going to use that one for precast. It's a fully functional prototype, but what we did is we scaled down the actual printer. Um, we made it completely modular design, so you can add rails, you can add height, but out of the box you're getting multiple stories with all of our printers. So you can go two, three stories with a base configuration. We also worked on the controller, on the rail system, leveling process, and also uh, redesigned the nozzle slightly. So everything we did is a result of years of R&D, not only on the machine, but on the materials. We're very proud of what we have here, and we've worked not only independently, but with experts in gantry design, and with partners just like you out there that do this for a living. They make houses, they make uh, everything out of traditional, they do 3D printed construction. So we really wanted to take all the feedback into this design and we hope you like it. <laughs> One of the bigger improvements that we're seeing on the new machine installed in the factory here is actually the motion control is a lot smoother. We replaced a lot of the linear bearings with rails and wheels. Uh, it's allowing for a little bit more accurate motion and a little bit smoother motion overall as well. Before you had something set up potentially to put a hopper or to put a mixer over the hopper. Now I see this machine doesn't have that, uh, that set up. Do you decide not to go with the machine mounted mixer? The machine mounted mixer was seen uh, almost as redundant. We didn't necessarily need it. The, the mixing was all taking place in the pump already. So we wound up actually bypassing it on the old machine. This one, we just simplified it, got rid of it, and made it way more efficient overall. Did you reconsider any of your hose management? We're, that, that we're talking about it this morning, so. The way we have this machine installed currently is actually half of the height. Um, it will ship with two of the uh, Z components. A modular design, it's fully functional as it is right here. We have the pieces just laying off to the side right now because we don't need them. Um, but if we needed to go taller, we could put them back on and we can put even more on need to go taller still. Cool. What about this thing? We have uh, a new silo. This is a new uh, design for a silo that our sister company Hysis has been working on. Uh, it's hopefully going to give us much more reliable material to print with overall. So this, as it is right now, is just for the dry material. All the mixing takes place in the uh, semi-smart pump that we're going to be using with this machine. We're also uh, very excited to have special guests here. We announced uh, probably a couple months ago that we signed a partnership with Alquist that is going to be transitioning to using Black Buffalo printers for their future jobs and just you know kind of uh, not just talking about working with partners we invited them in here for the first time that we set up this printer and they're going to be uh, working with us hand in hand to talk about you know how the printer works what can be improved what tweaks we might be able to make and we expect the same for all of our clients we have a lot lined up we're really excited about uh, what Alquist is doing and Proud to have them here. It's been a great week here. Uh, it's been able to learn the ins and outs of this machine, different process compared to the old machine, and the, the advantages that's going to hold on site. You know, when you're doing a lot of homes in a row, being able to have that that rail system is going to be a, a big advantage on site. And we're, we're always looking forward to work very closely with the manufacturer to, to find pockets and improvements that uh, that we see uh, fit that would make our lives easier on the job site and be able to really make the best machine for the industry. It's been great to get live feedback. So one announcement that we're going to make officially through a press release, I was kind of holding on January, but you happen to be here. Um, Black Buffalo 3D just purchased 106 acres of land for a permanent factory in Pennsylvania. We're also doing it as mixed use, so it's not only going to be a factory that we're going to 3D print, and also 3D print components and infrastructure components that we need on the land. But we're also going to make use cases and real world examples that will be totally transparent on the cost of the projects to make affordable houses, multiple story units, and single story units on the land so that we're not only going to help out with bringing uh, job opportunities and new manufacturing facilities to the United States, 
but we're also going to create housing where it's needed most in rural America. And all Quest is going to be helping us with that. Here's a 200 square foot tiny house that they designed. I really like this clever concept because the edges are rounded. This gives you more square footage on the interior with less material on the exterior. Let's hear more what Peter has to say about this. Back outside with our prototype NC1G printer that goes up to four stories. We'll be using this in the future for a potential precast business. It's not as portable as our current model, but it's just as reliable. It prints really well helped us prove out the concepts and figure out what we needed to improve on the next one. Um, what you'll see in the background here is a sample tiny house. We just did a, you know, like a half or a quarter print to show because we noticed a lot of examples online of 3D printed housing still look like traditional houses. They were still rectangular, they were still square. They didn't really take advantage of what you could do with a 3D printer. So our uh, head of R&D in mechanical engineering actually spent a probably like six hours in CAD, coming up with a nice 200 square foot design for a tiny home to kind of show off what you can do with curves and how quick, how closely you can get lines and different walls to change something and make something unique with a 3D printer. And since our materials are structural, there's really not a lot going into the planning other than figuring out what you like, putting it into the application and watching it print out. So we can take a closer look if you want. So basically the idea behind this model is that it's a tiny home and you might want some built-ins and cabinetry or different countertops. So we actually put the brakes of where all the furniture would fit into the tiny house so that it would be built or printed for it. So you might want to drop a countertop, a wood block, a butcher block, or you might want to put drawers or cabinets that exist in there. We figured it would be a small walk-in shower on the right, uh, you know, a toilet for a bathroom, the bedroom area would be here. But again, this is to use the space and show the creativity on wall design um, and make every inch of it functional. Personally, I would feel crammed in a house this small, but I know there's a movement throughout America and the world that people want to do more with less. And this really is to show off that whatever you wanted to change about this design could easily be done and it would just be imported into our application and print it on or near site and then brought onto the, your uh, land or wherever you want to place it. So just a really good use case that not only could you print multiples of these in this footprint and move it via crane and truck and put it into place, but you could do multiple different designs on this footprint. Whatever you had your customers order and you could uh, print it out on demand. So we, we didn't do uh, much in the wall structure and changing it it's really if you see a wide spot in the wall it was more around the design there's not a functional purpose on it it was just to kind of show off what you can do and we purposely made the curve come around but also some of these juts out closer in different areas so you can see how the walls are and we also wanted to show off our mix we did this in um, you know not ideal weather conditions it was around 50 degrees Fahrenheit it dipped below that which is really the bottom line of what we recommend for printing. But you can see, other than some over extrusion on one wall over there, which happened uh, very quickly uh, and was very quickly corrected, um, you see a lot of consistency in the wall and the height and everything. And we worked for the last year and a half on this material, over 60 formulas to get it right. And we're investing heavily, not just in our own tests and our own testimonials, not even just customer tests, but you're gonna be hearing more a lot a lot more about our lab test coming out in the new year. Nice. What about the on the edge there, it's cut on the left? Yep. So part of our tests that are going on, we required a lot of different test walls be printed. We don't like waste around here. We really tout how sustainable our prints are. So even with our showcase models, we printed some of those test walls inside. So as part of the program, we printed the test walls and then we cut them off so we could send them over to the lab. So any of the areas that are cut there are because we totally maximized the space and the design of what we were doing so that we had functional use cases as well that we could send to the lab. Are there any specific features of this printer you can point to that won't be in future generations? There, there's a lot of redundancy in this design and machinery where it was built literally from sheet metal from the ground up. So we were able to basically make a more efficient build process. Looked at 
what was redundant? How can we improve the leveling? How can we improve the usability? The rail system and the tracks and even the motors and how it moves, which the mechanical engineers know a lot more about the specifics than I do. But basically every aspect of this machine sees an improvement in the new model. And I think as the industry grows, we'll continue to see that. But we don't want to completely obsolete any models as we move forward because we are working on next generation designs. So we made sure that any of the future features that we're going to build into new printers coming out can also be adapted if you're an existing buyer. So if you purchase a Black Buffalo 3D printer, we expect you'll be using that three to five years minimum. And we hope that at the end of that life, you're bought in, you're getting tons of projects, you buy the new model, but the old one doesn't just get wasted. You're still using it. And we built it for long-term use. On the inside, they used metal ties to connect the interior and exterior walls. This is where they could put insulation. In particularly cold regions, they might choose to have a bigger gap between the interior and exterior to have a higher R value from foam or whatever you may choose to insulate. I think this design is really clever because it doesn't waste any space. You have the bathroom for a shower, toilet, everything you need, nothing more.